Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look up the nth occurrence of a value. In my data, I have player names and the score they achieved each time they played the game. What I want to do is specify a player name, the occurrence of the game that they played and the score they achieved for that game. I'm going to show you two methods. The first will work in any version of Excel and the second will only work in Excel 365, but it is a much easier solution. So let's start off with the version that will work in any version of Excel. And we'd start off by using the row function. Now the row function returns the row number of a reference you give it. So if I refer to A2, it returns two. But what I want to do is return the row number for all of these cells, A2 to A12, containing my names. You can see that in Excel 365, which is what I'm in now, it spills its results into surrounding cells. Now, if you're not in Excel 365, you can see those results by selecting a formula and pressing the F9 key on your keyboard, and you'll see all the results in a single cell. I'll just undo the F9 effect. Now, actually I want one through to 11, so I can easily do that by just saying minus one at the end there. But I only want to return a row number if the player name is equal to the player I've specified in D2. So what I'm gonna do is divide this by a logical test. And the logical test is gonna say, do these cells equal this value here? I'll put that in brackets. Now, if I just F9 that part of the formula, you can see I get trues and falses. True if the name is equal to Barbara and false if it isn't. Now, mathematically, true is a one and false is a zero. And when I divide by zero, I will get an error. So I'll just undo the F9 trick and press enter. You can see I get a number for the rows where Barbara is listed and I get a divide by zero error where she isn't. Now, those numbers are effectively the position of Barbara's scores within our table, the first row, the fifth row, and the 11th row. Now, if I want to return game two, then I want to return the value from the fifth row. If it was game three, I'd want to return the value from the 11th row. So how do I do that? Well, I can use the small function and small will allow you to return the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., smallest value within an array of values. But I am going to use the small function within the aggregate function, so I don't have to create an array formula and use Control Shift Enter. So aggregate avoids that problem. So here we are, aggregate, and I'm gonna use the small function within this list, which is 15. And what I want to do is ignore error values, ignore these divide by zero errors. I'm only interested in the numbers, comma. My array is this formula that returns the row numbers here. And then the last argument is K. So this relates to the small function. If I put one in K, it would return the smallest value. If I put two in K, it would return the second smallest value. So I need to refer to the value in E2. If I close the bracket and press enter, it returns five. Why does it return five? Well, if we go back to our little row calculation, the second smallest value is in row five. We've got our smallest value in row one and our second smallest value in row five. I'll undo that. So we now know that we need to return the value from row five to get the second smallest value. Now to return the value in row five, we can put this in the index function. So the index function asks for an array, an array of values, and then allows us to specify a row number to return a value from that array. So our array are all these scores here, and the row number is returned by our aggregate function. So if I close the bracket, press enter, I get 245. Let's look at the method you can use in Excel 365. I think you'll agree this is slightly simpler. You can use the new filter function. The 
array is all the scores that we want to return. Include has got to be a logical test. So we need to say which of these player names equals this player name here. So I'd select all these player names and say, does it equal this player name? And then if I close the bracket and press enter, I get all of the scores for Barbara. Now I want to return the nth occurrence of those scores. So at the moment, that's the second occurrence. And again, I can use the index function to do this. So my array is returned by the filter function and the row number is specified by the game number that I've typed here. So I close the bracket, press enter, and it returns the second game. Now with both of these methods, if I change the name, it returns the correct score. So Bill's second score is 338. And if I change the game number, let's change this to five. So Bill's fifth game is 397, as you can see there. And the same would be the case here. Bill, fifth game, 397. So both methods, you end up with the same results. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.